When Rebel 7 launched back in December last year, it's probably fair to say that it got off to a little bit of a rocky start. The beta test phase had thrown up a, a number of bugs uh, and defects, and for me, and I think many others, the initial release proved to be a bit unstable. In my previous video, uh, I looked at a number of the problems, uh, some of the bugs and crashes that I had personally been experiencing, uh, as well as rating some of the new features. Since then, uh, Escape Motions have been working hard uh, and have released a significant number of patches. So I thought it'd be worth doing a quick video to see how the program has been improving since the release of 7.1 uh, and the subsequent patches that are now available. My name's Pete. Welcome to Basement Picasso. So things certainly aren't perfect. Uh, I find Rebel can be very slow to start, uh, frequently taking over uh, a minute before it's responsive. By comparison, uh, <laughs> ArtRage VT is responsive before I can even finish this sentence. Uh, that would be bearable uh, if it was just at the start, but that becomes a bit more of a problem when you adjust anything that uh, the program needs to then restart, like changing any of the settings. Another minor issue is that while there are options to zoom and rotate at the cursor, uh, which I've mapped onto my loop deck controls, the zoom works as expected, uh, but rotate at cursor still rotates at the center of the screen, which is an existing issue uh, from version six. Another issue from version 6 is that panel sizes frequently jump about. Uh, unfortunately, this is due to the framework being used by Rebel, so this hasn't been and isn't going to be uh, an easy fix for them. Uh, another one, which I haven't figured out the root cause for yet, means that occasionally I manage to break the watercolour engine so putting down a watercolour stroke simply doesn't diffuse. Uh, now it's easily fixed by saving, quitting and reloading. But as mentioned previously, that takes a minute to, to restart Rebel again. And lastly, I don't tend to use NanoPixel, which I will explain why in the next video. But when I do, it seems to be back to absolutely hammering the, the GPU for some reason. Having said all of that, there have been a lot of bug fixes and improvements recently. And my experience has been much better and I have been able to do four hour life drawing sessions without any interruption. So I have a lot more confidence in its general stability. One significant improvement added in 7.1 was an overhaul to the stencil and structure UI. So let's take a quick look at that. So the new stencils and structures panels uh, both work in a very similar way with a, an enhanced uh, menu system. So if we have a look at the stencils and click on the stencil library, what we can now do is uh, easily add in multiple stencils that we want to be able to use. So we can just click on each of those uh, and you'll see that it adds it to the, the stencils panel. Um, we can pick a couple of those and you'll see that those get uh, added in on the left hand side. And what that does is uh, for each of those uh, stencils, um, <clears throat> we've now got an, an improved menu. So when you click on one of these stencils, you'll see it opens out and it gives you these uh, four little icons. So you can easily uh, drag to resize, you can click and move your stencil around. You can rotate it, you can remove it, uh, and then you've got the menu which gives you the various options, including things like uh, invert, border, uh, tile, etc. And what that means is it's now very easy to have uh, a couple of stencils on your image for the entire duration of while you're working uh, on a painting. So. Quite often uh, what I'll do is at the, the start of a painting, 
uh, I'll uh, just do some freehand and then I want to come in and maybe put uh, a few stencil marks down so I can pick a stencil and just put a few of those in. Uh, possibly use the other stencil and click on that to make it go away and then go to a different stencil and then we can put some marks down from that uh, and then we can click the button there to hide everything. Um, so what that means is I can then just go back to uh, normal freehand painting and paint in uh, using uh, just anything that I want to, to work on. But later in the painting, if I want to come back and maybe uh, reinforce some of those marks, um, then that stencil is still there in exactly the same position that it was in previously, which is uh, really helpful. So that gives you uh, a lot more control uh, over the, the stencils and being able to, to work with them for, for a long period of time. The only thing to be aware of is if you're zoomed in and you bring up a, a stencil, then obviously you can't see the menu at the, the top right hand side. Uh, and you need to be aware that if you right click, then you will actually drag the stencil. If you want to move the canvas, you need to uh, hold the space bar uh, and move that around. Uh, that catches me out all the time because I tend to use uh, right click just to move everything around. So. That can be a bit tricky uh, and obviously that uh, icon uh, isn't on the screen so you do need to to zoom in and out to be able to to get back to to that um, the nice thing as well is if you make any adjustments to the stencil in terms of moving it around it is part of the undo buffer so you can just uh, undo and move the stencil back into its previous position so that's all really good, uh, really helpful uh, in terms of being able to work with multiple stencils. The only downside with that is um, the, there is an option uh, which I used previously, which is keep stencils active when hidden. Um, now that works very effectively if you have one stencil, but if you've got uh, multiple stencils and they're all hidden uh, and you try and use the keep stencils uh, active, then what you're going to find is uh, very little will paint because it's actually trying to paint through both stencils. So it'll only come up where the stencils actually overlap. It's not really using uh, either of them. So uh, one of my suggestions has been that uh, it would be really helpful to have that uh, option to keep a stencil active when hidden uh, at an individual stencil level, uh, possibly as a sort of third state. So rather than it just being on and off, you could have it uh, visible, uh, hidden, and then another one would be hidden but still active. And that way you could uh, toggle them on individually. Um, because you can then, you can only paint with them with the stencil active, one of the things that you might find uh, helpful is uh, if you go to the edit preferences, and then on the colour tab, you'll see that under stencils, there is an option to be able to change the colour and also the opacity. Uh, and you might find that it's helpful if you just turn the opacity of a stencil down. And... <laughs> oh, Rebel. So unfortunately, that's a, a new bug that I've found, which I have now reported which can unfortunately cause Rebel to crash if you're trying to adjust the stencil opacity. So the way that you can do it safely at the moment is if you make your stencil active, uh, what will cause it to crash is if you try and change the opacity while this menu is active. So you can either uh, click outside the stencil or you can just uh, start uh, painting with a, a brush uh, as long as the stencil's applied and that menu is not active, what you can then do is uh, go into Preferences, Colour, and then you've got Stencil Opacity and you can adjust that uh, up or down to whatever you want. Uh, and then when you apply that, uh, that will adjust the, the opacity uh, without any problems. So you can set it to whatever value uh, 
uh, is going to, to work effectively for you. In my last video, one of the most positive aspects that I called out was the Escape Motions team themselves uh, and the hard work that they put in. Uh, given the regular patches being released and the number of bug fixes included, it's great to see how dedicated they are. Off the back of my last video, uh, I recently had the chance to speak for a couple of hours with Peter Blaskovich, who's the owner of Escape Motions. Now, I can't share the details uh, as it was off the record and some of it was future looking. But what did come across was really clearly was the passion and enthusiasm for continuing to develop Rebel. Uh, Peter acknowledged uh, a lot of the challenges to date uh, and did explain that some of the things that they did with version 7 had proven to be more complex than they expected, which is understandable. But I personally came away from the conversation with Peter with uh, an extremely positive uh, and optimistic view for the future of uh, Rebel, which uh, is uh, absolutely fantastic. I'd be interested to know how you're getting on with Rebel. Um, are there any particular bugs or issues uh, that are bothering you? Um, otherwise, for me, it feels like we're finally close to what I would describe as a stable product release. It's what I felt we should have had back in December, uh, and I'll continue to advocate for more stable initial releases uh, going forward. In my next video, uh, I will be discussing texture and impasto in Rebel and Infinite Painter. So until then, thanks for watching and hope to see you again soon.